Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So, I'm going to show you everything I can show you about the back side or the software side of what I've been doing on the CNC coil winder, the flat coil winder using the RWG OSD as you can see. So, that ran pretty well. Let's go straight on into the settings. So we're in the interface on the web interface for the printer. And what we got to do is go down here to settings, go down in, uh, get different tabs. We're going to go into the system editor. I guess first I should note that you should be uh, having the latest firmware uh, above what I am showing here. If you do not, you cannot get the U axis to work right. Um, there is a problem homing extra axes as well. Uh, I think that's the issue that I had. It's been a while. So I'm going to go in here to the config.g and uh, pull this up and show you what we got. All right, so here is the uh, config.g. The stuff above uh, this line here is actually things for the uh, Wi-Fi and stuff, which I'm not going to show you because it has stuff I don't want you to see. Um, but everything that you see on my screen that has a, a little asterisk or a star, I should say, right here, um, is stuff that I had to add or change. So under um, access and motor configuration, again, I'm using a Delta configuration. So if you're using a, Cart a Cartesian setup, it'll be similar. But some of these will be different in yours. So here I had to uh, basically map the extruder drive to the proper location and unmap the other drives so that the, um, the machine did not see two drives to the same point or something similar to that. So here I've added the U and I've moved the E. Okay, and then here you've got U also. So um, here is the uh, in stops. You have to set certain things up before or other certain things. So if you don't have it in the order that I have it in here, it may not work the same. I've learned that the hard way. You have to define certain things or else the commands don't register as it reads this file on startup. So that's what happens. This file gets read on startup. So here we are. You can see everything that I've got set up here. Um, again, everything with an, uh, a star asterisk here is important. So I've added the U here. So this is the in-stop adjustments. Um, I'm putting a U because I have no adjustment on that guy. Uh, or zero, I mean U zero. Here uh, I'm defining the micro-stepping. So U, I've added the U and I've adjusted the E. Uh, in my case, I'm using the E as the rotational table and the U as the uh, tool, tool end where the wire comes out. Here is the uh, in stops and degrees. Um, this one gets a little more complicated, so I had to turn the access steps per millimeter into a 360 degree control. So what I mean by that is that if I punch in uh, a command like G1 and then E, or I guess G1, U, 360, it will make a, a 360 degree rotation. So you have to convert the axis steps per millimeter into a 360 degree. So to do that, you just take the uh, steps per millimeter, multiply them by, by the micro stepping that you have set up, and divide that by the um, uh, 360. So in my case, I have a 0.9 degree steps uh, stepper motor, or point. 0.9 degree smallest increment so it's 400 steps per revolution multiply that by 256 because I have my micro stepping right here is 256 and I get this number right here and that number gets dropped right on into the M92U command now you can have all the M92's on one line so you could put all these on one line but I've separated them just to make it easier to show you here as well as figure out what I've got so the next one, okay, the first one is a direct drive, so we don't need to worry about any other math. But the next one, this one is a 1.8 steps per revolution, or steps, steps, uh, however you say that, 200 steps, okay? So in this case, you've got 16 micro-stepping, which I've got set right here. So I take 200 times 16 and divide that by 360, and it gives me this long number. Now in this case, I've got a gear ratio. So if you have a gear ratio, you need to multiply um, this number here by the gear ratio. So in my case, it's uh, 72 to 21 is the gear ratio. 
So doing that math, you get this number, multiply that by this, and you get this number here. And that's what I've got set for my, my E. Now the U, in this case, I've got this set up to be absolute. And so my U is absolute, but my um, E is relative. And you can't you can change these things, but the way I've got it set up, I like the way that that was set up. And so I've kept it as relative, which we'll get into um, down here where it says G90 and G83. So you've got send absolute coordinates, but relative extruder moves. You can adjust these to your liking, but this is how I've got it set up. The next thing is, is we've got to add the uh, current. So we've got to add the U for the current. And then here we've got acceleration. Uh, uh, basically the jerk, how fast can it go, and um, instant instantaneous speed changes here as well. So I've added uh, I've added the U in all of these so I can make sure I have exactly what I need. This works for me. I've actually need to adjust these as re as recording this video. I need to make some adjustments there. And uh, the one thing that really threw me off for a long time is this right here. So you've got to set maximum axis travels, okay, for the U. The E doesn't matter because it's a, it thinks it's an extruder, so it doesn't matter. But here we've got to set these limits. Uh, if you do not put these in and you do not put these in in the right place in here, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. So, um, yeah, you've got to set these in here. I've got mine set to some astronomically large number, and I did that because, uh, well, I never want to reach this number because this is basically rotations. Um, so 360 is one rotation, so 360 times this number is how many times it's going to go around. So yeah, just pick a number that's realistic and put it into your limits. Now here we've got to do a maximum and a minimum, or it will only turn one way and stop at the zero point. And then down here uh, I've defined the rotary table, uh, the basically what's unspooling uh, or keeping the wire from getting twisted, that table I've got. Um, the extruder. It's basically hooked up to an extruder output. And uh, we've had to define it here, so I've defined it here, which is nice. It shows up exactly as rotary table. It still says extruder on the screens and stuff, but it's labeled as rotary table as a tool. And I've defined it as a tool zero. And um, a few other little things. Oh, cold extrusion. So I've set all the uh, temperatures to zero, and I've had to in introduce this set cold or allow cold extrusion or it won't spin because I don't have any of the heaters set up. So the heaters here don't matter. Servo control is for my CNC um, and then a few other things down here for uh, for other settings that we're really not concerned about. So the bulk is uh, is yeah is right here. You have you have to set all these up in order for you to uh, get this access access set up. So I'm gonna hit uh, save changes. It says would you like to reboot? Sure, I'm going to go here, wait for it, and it'll come back online. And the other thing you need to do, which is very important, all right, so now, once you do this and you do it properly, mm -hmm. under machine control, you should see the home U here now and make sure those are moving. This is still labeled extruder control, but now the tool zero is, is, ro is uh, labeled as a uh, rotary table. So we'll home this. You have to home everything for, this, for the drives to be active and work while you're trying to print. And yeah, you should be good to go. The next thing you need to do is you have to make a home command for this. So the X, the Y, and the Z, in my case in the Delta or Cartesian, they're sort of pre-configured, except in Cartesian you probably have to set your axis limits. But here they're uh, a little different. Um, you only set them in one direction. So basically, I got to go back to my settings and I have to create a new file called home.g. So you just hit create new, label it home.g, okay, and then it'll pop up here. You click on it, then you can edit it. And what I've got in here is basically a homing commands for you. So this is the way I've got mine set. You can do some homework and figure this out. This works for what I'm doing. Yours might be a little different. So that basically is uh, all you need to worry about on, uh, on this side of things. Everything else comes while we look at how to generate the G-code and all the other craziness that happens. Now real quickly, what I usually do is I home everything, and in my file I've got it set up to pause. So when I print something, it pauses, 
and then I have to go in here and I have to run my Z down to where the tool end hits the bed where I feel that the pressure is just right and then I've made a command here that says set Z where it is and what this actually does I put set Z where it is uh, in order to set up these user defined macros you go in here to macros here I got set Z where it is I can edit it do you want to run it no what I'd like to do is edit it uh, so this is what it is G92 Z0 the G92 space Z0 and you can home any axes in this manner but this is what I'm doing to basically tell the machine where zero is at before I run my um, my print or in this case my coil winding and then if I feel like I need more or less pressure because it's peeling off my tape um, we have the luxury of using micro stepping or a, they call it baby stepping and uh, you can raise it up or down on the fly it does lag because there is a buffer so there's a slight lag on these things including anything you change like speed factor or baby stepping or anything it has to make it through whatever's in the buffer before it adjusts it so yeah so let's move on to the other side of things that's how I've got my um, configuration set up and so far so good alright so the first step to making the uh, the G code I'm gonna be using fusion 360 here and just try making these uh, spiral so in my case I'm not going to show you all the setups and all this stuff I'm just not I don't have uh, you can't sit through that you need to figure out how to use cam there's plenty of tutorials so go figure out how to use the cam settings draw these things but I basically just have a really large spiral here and um, I'm basically going to take this spiral alright and in here under post process I've created my own post processor now this has been hacked from uh, the uh, MPCNC Fusion 360 version 6 uh, SD card CSP. If you just look that up, you'll find it. So, in order to make this version of uh, software work that I'm going to show you, you have to open up the config file. All right, now we're in a different uh, thing here. We're in what Fusion uses as a script rewriting program. Now, there's a really important thing here. You need to have all coordinates, X, Y, uh, at all times in every line of your code or the script that generates the files um, for the U and, and the E in this case, they do not work. So you must uh, go in here and edit your post processor to where, to where you're always forcing, okay, right here, I'm always forcing X and I'm always forcing Y. I'm not always forcing Z, it's not necessary, but you have to write in here force true. All right, right here, this force true, you have to add this in here. If you do not have this, uh, basically the script doesn't work. So go in here and, and edit this in any of your post processing stuff for Fusion and make sure it writes both of these formats. In my case, this is what, uh, this is what it looks like. I've hacked this to make this work for my particular application for the uh, CNC but um, up here in the top you can see that uh, this thing is made for an MP CNC and the last version I used it version 6 so you can you can look this stuff up find it online and then uh, do whatever you want with it it's a bit complicated at first but take some time you'll figure it out so let's jump back into fusion real quick all right, so after you make sure you have uh, that little piece that took me a long time to figure out, get that thing done. Then, uh, then you can go in here after you. Uh, again, I'm not going to show you all these details. I'll, I'll quickly explain this though. So I've, I've selected two boundary. I'm using I'm using a morphed spiral, and I've selected two boundaries. I've selected geometry properly for this, and uh, then the important parts is basically you're going from the outside to inside. What, how are you going to wrap this spiral? The step over basically is the size of the wire. In my case, this is a bifiler, so I'm using a double the step over that I normally would. And one way direction, um, and that is pretty well the important pieces. You can pick your entry point as well. But really, these are the important pieces. I'm using a tool that's only 0.2 millimeter. I just made a random tool that was a small diameter for this. And uh, here it's in red. It's giving me an error. Uh, it's because the step over is bigger than the tool, but it still works fine. I don't care. 
So after we generate this spiral, we go to post process and we save it. Okay, so I've exported that, I've saved it. So let's go have a look in uh, in a text. Well, actually, let's just go pull it up in uh, a different program so we can see what it looks like. All right, as you can see here, um, there's two very important things. First of all, um, the first one here, you see these uh, not spaces, but instead I put the uh, underscore in there. You can't have spaces for the uh, script that we've created that Matt has generated currently. Cannot have uh, spaces in your file names, so make sure you don't have that. Um, so I'm going to open this in um, Simplified 3D so that you can actually see what we've got. So here we've got Simplified 3D pulled up. We've got our spiral. Now, the way that the Fusion 360 generates the code, which I don't like, it does a lot of stuff that's for machining and not for wire laying. So, you know, it, we tried to make the script so that you could use any G code generator that you wanted as long as it fit the format, which is basically you have to have all X and Y on every line um, and a few other small details. And so, what Fusion does is it writes this extra spiral or a perfect circle in the middle so it, it overlaps itself so I manually remove that in the uh, in the code I'll show you in a second but you can see the double overlap there on the outside so this spiral looks good uh, this is set up for a different printer so it's off the center but it's zero zeroed for me for the Delta here you might have it zeroed over here if it's Cartesian or something so now that we know the file is good it exported fine Let's go look at it in a text editor. Okay, so here we are in the text editor. You can see that thing spit out a bunch of these. Now, I'm not going to show you a bunch of craziness. I'm going to try to really quickly explain something to you. Um, first of all, uh, make sure everything's going to be at zero. So it's a zero, zero. And then for my case, I want to delete that first spiral. So I know that Y is at zero and X is at negative four. So I'm just going to scroll down here to where I find... Uh, basically the exact same scenario and just delete those lines of code and then I have to take this and uh, I'm going to basically erase all these extra pieces and I'm going to just put that right here okay and then now it will fall into the right spot um, so what we're gonna pay close attention to here uh, I guess I need to do this one as well. I've got the F command written on every single line, which you don't need. So you can only need to read it, write it once, but I've got Fusion set up to write it every single time. There's a possibility that you'll need to write that on every single line for the script to work, because we rewrite that value every time. So I haven't tested that. You'll have to experiment with that on your own. But if it fails or doesn't work at all, it could be because you don't have this on every line. That's the other one you need to make sure is on every line. So I erased that first part. If I go down here to the bottom, I can do the exact same thing for the bottom. So I got x, negative 98. So I just delete exactly one loop. x, negative 98. Do, do, do. Back to y, 0-ish. Now I've removed those outside spirals. I can open this up and check it, whatever. So I'm going to save this. So this is what we've got right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my little script. So... Uh, I've got it set up in uh, CMD. Okay, so the program that we've created is called GPR.exe. And uh, it's actually uh, another piece of software that someone else wrote that I'll put in the description. And this little script that we've made right here, um, you know, it is it is open source and it's published as open source. I need to find out where to post it. So as posting this video right this second, I won't have links to my... Um, script here that my friend Matt wrote. So I'll post that later when I figure that out. If you need it instantly, let me know. I can send you at least the uh, uh, the, the actual exe file and get you going maybe. But the rest of it, uh, I got to figure out where to pre repost that stuff uh, properly. So currently, um, this up here is basically an old file that I ran, and you can see what it does. It writes these other values. So if you want to just look at the file, you just type in uh, this, uh, gpr.exe space, whatever your file name is, the whole file name, and just hit enter. I'm not going to do that right now because it will take forever to run. And then in order to export the file, you just put the little arrow over 
carrot or whatever that is. I don't know. And I usually put U like this. So test video spiral U dot G code. And then hit enter. And if it is successful, um, it will pop up here with a new line. And you will see the file. If the file is not successful, um, we gotta go over here. There we go. If the file is not successful, it will just basically do nothing. So if you look in your folder where you're directing the output, um, it will do nothing. So just make sure gpr.exe and the file name is in the same folder, and it'll run pretty well wherever you have it. I'm using Windows, so I don't know if any other, I'm sure whatever else runs the exe file should run it, but I am using Windows in this case. So it looks like it worked, so let's go in the folder and have a look at what happened. All right, so it looks like it uh, spit out this new file. So let's go ahead and uh, get in there and look at that file and see what's going on. So we've got this file pulled up side by side so we can see uh, everything we're looking for. And you can see what happened here. It uh, basically wrote this file out just like this. Now, there's some extra data here. That's because we've got absolute and non-absolute, right? We've got both. So absolute or relative, depending on how you have your setup, you can uh, just change basically some things here and you can have absolute uh, I'm sorry that's relative and this is absolute so right now uh, originally I only had the U and so everything else is just extra data here so this can be used for uh, whatever you wish to use it for in my case I have to actually rewrite all the lines of code here and make them work so U is fine okay so in order to uh, to do what we want here I basically need to uh, take this section of code and turn it into the letter E so that it fits my extruder. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Control Find, Replace, make sure all these options are right, and I want to replace it with E. So replace all. This will take a second. Okay, so it finished. This this is a big code. So it's quite a few of them, and you can see what it did. It replaced E right here. So now we've got our um, absolute value for our, our extruder motor. And then because I don't need anything of this sort over here, I am going to also replace this with a bracket because this is basically a comment, and it will ignore everything beyond it. So, uh, yeah, so let's get this processed. Okay, so it replaced all those. Looks like it's good to go. So that's how I'm currently um, using the E motor or extruder motor as the untwister motor and the U here as a um, regular output that's uh, also the same, which is absolute, same as the X and Y. So that is how the, uh, the software works. Now, as you can see, uh, this very first line right here. It's a little crazy. It's got quite a bit of a difference. And then up here and up here, and it really gets screwed up. So you really need a 2D path. This will only work for a 2D path. You start throwing Z values in there, and uh, it'll process it, but it'll probably get all messed up. So it's just a point to point to point. Now, in this case, uh, all these motions happen at once. So if this was a spiral, then all these motions from this point to this point are going to happen in between whatever the X and Y values are here. I have a separate um, script program that will write all of these uh, values that you saw on the end in a new line of code uh, with a new F value. And then you can just change the F value manually just the way I did here. And you're going to have to know what you're doing in order for you to make this piece of software, uh, this script, to work. You're going to really have to hack things and understand them. So I'm going to go up here to a file, uh, save as, and I like to save this file as also with an E on it, and just save it like that. Now we can upload this to the printer and, uh, and watch it run. So for my case, I've got all these in here under uh, Coilwinder 360, um, Rotary Table, and I'm uploading my file. This is a pretty big file. It'll take a few seconds. Upload this guy and then run it. Now what I've got on the beginning of mine is to come down 200 and pause and rotate the head to the right spot. Um, and I have to put all in the, the you know put all that information in there by hand. 
get it all working and then uh, figure out what the best solution is for your own setup for me that's what I'm doing so I can go in here and then just uh, run that file that we just made that one right there Boop. would you like to run yes I'm not gonna run it but um, yeah we can run that file we can spit out uh, a coil and we can go on our way so I hope that that was helpful uh, hopefully I hit all the points that I needed to hit um, if you need some help, I'm not so sure I can respond fast enough to everybody. There's probably going to be a lot of help uh, needed. And you're really kind of just stuck with what we have on the, at the moment. If you do edit the script and you change all these things, I would love to uh, have an update from you uh, or com conversation with you. Maybe you could uh, edit things even further than what Matt has built. But uh, yeah, thanks to Matt for even getting the script built. That's a blessing, and I would not be able to do that on my own. So he got it this far, and if anyone wants to advance it and really get it going, that would be awesome. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this helped. And yeah, read the Bible more. God bless you guys. Thanks. Leave a comment. Thumbs up, thumbs down, all those things. Sorry about the poor quality of audio. Yeah, you get what you get. All right, peace out.